from After Dark World Headquarters. This is your favorite right correspondent, KD, for a dreary, dark, rainy Sunday, December 19th. I want you to check out my Hall of Fame today. Just check this out. My autographed Michael P.S. Hayes pick. As always, a tribute to Brother Scott with his favorite dog, Ginger. And yes, there she is. There she is. Christy Canyon. That got it going on, Christy Canyon. It just brightens up the whole room. Makes it festive for Christmas or something like that. So anyway... You'll be seeing this on, like I say, on a Sunday after the Annie Scene show, the Annie Scene Christmas show. Uh, you should go on my Facebook page and check out if you want to see some pics and a whole lot of great people having a whole lot of fun. So anyway, this will be a short one. Well, let's continue. We've been talking about 101 personal best, 100 personal development classics. I want to go back to one. And this is from 1890. Russell Cornwell, Acres of Diamonds, published in 1890. Acres of Diamonds, of the major themes of spirituality and happiness. Acres of Diamonds actually started as a speech given by Russell H. Cornwell in order to raise funds for the newly formed Temple University. Before he was finished, Cornwell would deliver the talk more than 6,000 times. It eventually made its way into print and has become a classic with the timeless message that you can find wealth, happiness, and success right within your own current circumstances. For anyone who feels like they're stuck in the rat race, constantly chasing the next biggest item on their to-buy to list, this book can help you reevaluate your life's goals and teach you happiness truly does come from within. This is a very small book and a quick read and makes a wonderful selection for a weekend where weather keeps you in. Well, how appropriate. I do not own Acres of Diamonds. However, I intend on getting it. Anyway, this little... This little, um, what would you call it, a compendium to all the great personal development classics. I love the fact they go back that far to 1890. One Hustler Joke. Let's see. Yeah. You never go wrong with a Hustler Joke. A couple appeared before the judge in a divorce proceeding. What are your grounds, he asked. Cruel and inhuman punishment, the woman said. He tied me to the bed, then forced me to sing the national anthem while he peed on me. That's horrible, the magistrate muttered. Yeah, the woman said. He knows how much I hate to sing. Chosen by Larry Flint himself, personally. So we shall end quickly today with Miss Hollander getting down to the last few letters. <clears throat> Dear Miss Hollander, I have read your book and found it very enjoyable reading material and better than any dirty novel for pornographic enjoyment. It's a shame you haven't been on nationwide TV. I hope I will get a chance to see you on TV someday. Anyway, I have a question for you. Do you know of anyone who's made it with two or three men at once? To be specific, I mean a cock in the ass, a cock in the vagina, and a cock in the mouth all at the same time? You know what they call that. You know what they call that? Not a threesome. That's called making her air tight. Could this be done without too much pain or physical injury? 
This has always been my supreme fantasy ever since I was a girl of 11 or 12. I always imagined a big cock in my vagina, a small one up my ass, so as to not be too painful, and a mini medium-sized one cock for me to suck on. To make it even better, if it was physically possible, would it have someone suck a nipple and someone to tongue the clit? This would require four or five people at once. I wonder if you ever had an experience of this kind and would like to try it. I am... <laughs> I am 23 and full of sex fantasies. I hope you can answer this in your next book because I know you're too busy to give personal replies. Besides, this is quite personal and I'm living with my parents now. Thank you. Name withheld, Dayton, Tennessee. We need more letters. So here we are, a dreary Sunday morning. Get your ass up. Get your ass up. You know what it's time to do. Time to get shit done. If nothing else, get shit done for all those bad motherfuckers you know who are coming over for Christmas. Jokingly, of course. Well, maybe. So... For Mr. and Ms. America, all ships at sea, all sods everywhere, this is your favorite right correspondent, KD, wishing you all a great day. And remember, and remember, always be nice until it's time not to be nice. Be kind to animals. Say it with me. Discipline equals freedom and never complain and never explain. I must get on the road to adventures. I encourage you to do the same. I would love to meet you out there. Have a great day, everyone, and I will talk to you again very soon.